and I'm going. So as I was saying, every northeastern city is Toronto. Yes, and they're all Toronto. Um, I I wish we had so, some of the uh you know suburban public transportation that Toronto has, but you know uh, Cuomo had to kick out Andy Byford because he was too good at his job. Yes. So you know here we are. <laughs> Uh, there we go. I am now also recording locally. Fantastic. Hmm. All right. Does that mean we have a show going? Yes. So what, so what does Chicago smell like? Uh, it just kind of smells vaguely of like sweat, you know, like, oh, you know, like, okay. Did you sweat, have to sweat change? Kilbasa? Yeah, it smells <laughs> kind of just like sweaty meat. I don't know. Like that's <laughs> that's sort of the I was like, ah, oh, I imagine this is what Krakow smells like. And then I went to Krakow. And Krakow actually smells pretty decent. Well, all of <laughs> Europe just smells like diesel, diesel. And cigarettes. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jacksonville smells pretty fucking heinous. That's the one thing I really remember about Jacksonville was that it truly did smell absolutely <laughs> atrocious. You know, you know what I think the worst smelling American city is is Phoenix. Uh, purely because if you go in summer, you're just getting like melting rubber, like coating if the inside of your lungs. One more person tell me that like actually Phoenix is nice and there's tons to do. No, I just no, no. Yeah, maybe in the three months of the year you can go outside. <laughs> I'm gonna go with worst smelling city is Lancaster. Uh, no, because Gettysburg smells worse. Really? If, if we're if we're extending oh. if we're extending city down to like a small city or a town level, then yeah. I've got to put in a strong word for Greeley, Colorado, uh, uh, home home of the shit wind that occasionally ooh. like hits Denver from uh, from the various <laughs> hog plants. Uh, oh, that sounds. I sad. will say that York has that nice mixture of a. Uh, we used to have a paper a paper plant uh, which smelled. Horrific. Wonderful. Uh, and then we also got the um we got the cow shit smell. Mm. So we had cow shit and can I help you? Okay. About York, Pennsylvania. <laughs> yes. So literally shit. Talking Corinne wanted you to know that she had said talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> ask, ask her if she wants a job as the fourth host of the podcast. No. I'm not splitting it another way. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, that's the nativism that always comes out after the commune is established. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's your Kronstaz. Yes. Oh, hey. Well, well, uh, welcome to Well, There's Your Problem, a podcast where we talk about which cities smell the worst. <laughs> um, I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. Uh, my pronouns are he and him, and I don't smell that good myself right now, I to be honest. I feel you, bud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Alice Caldwell Kelly. My pronouns are she and her, and I smell delightful. Thank you for asking. Casherelle. Uh, my name Very is Liam nice. Anderson, and I'm the person who's talking right now. Uh, I smell, I can only imagine, absolutely fucking atrocious. I took a shower this morning. I don't think it helped. I, I assume I just sort of smell like I don't know what I smell like. <laughs> that's not that bad. That's, that's, not that's that bad. fine. That's, that's, if you, if you, this if is you this has been the smell update. Smell. It's a smell update. Yeah, you're you're lucky. We don't have smell of vision here. Yeah, especially the old apartment. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what do you see on the screen in front of you? Is we have a very attractive PowerPoint background now. Ooh, yeah, it's like network I, southeast. I used that just because I thought it would annoy you a little bit. It did. Yeah. Yes, it, <laughs> it kind of breaks with the tradition of every previous episode. It's mm -hmm. very annoying. Good, good. Suffer, well, Alice. We also <laughs> have text on the screen. That's a new one. <laughs> yeah, I made a funny joke. Yes. And All then right, I'll, no, I've you know what you 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 two record this. You just go fuck yourselves. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go, you want to teach the podcast? <laughs> no, Ross is good at it, but I suck. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see the remnants of a car here. No, I yeah. don't. No, I don't. I see a collapsed like tent, maybe, or like a. Group. Yeah, don't worry. We'll get to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, today we're going to talk about the 1955 Le Mans. Disaster. Oh, oh, beautiful. Oh, 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 oh. You know what? I take it oh. back. That's French for the maw. The lemons car disaster. 
<laughs> in the province of Maine. Yes. Wait, really? Yep. Oh, Maine. Huh. Yep. Hmm. So, but before we do that, we have to talk about the goddamn news. Oh, God. Tom, Turp, Tomo, Mister Tomup, you're fired. He had a lot of fun with that while we were uh, out west. <laughs> Temp. <laughs> I can't Tomp. believe you defeated Torp. <laughs> Pratt. <laughs> 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 so yeah, uh Philly has defeated uh President Trumbo. Mm-hmm. Um President Dalton Trumbo and mm-hmm. his like army of Brazilian special operations forces and like Polish Grom that were gonna investigate the Democrat Party rigging the polls <laughs> have been defeated by <laughs> you know the watchword the watchword of liberty is eternal vigilance, right? And so that's what happened. Congratulations to all the agents involved. That's right. Uh, I was proud to take point on this one with my second in command. How you like them apples, Roz? Justin yeah. Rosniak. Uh, <laughs> it turns out Roz still can't hold a carbine real good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we were we were very proud that uh, I, I will say you know uh, I understand obviously that this is not exactly the victory we were fucking hoping for. Uh, but I, I did, I did kind of want to take a moment to say that, like, it is important, especially as the world goes on this sort of collision course, and we don't know really what's going to happen, other than possible catastrophic climate change. To do take joy where you can get it, because otherwise you end up with a bullet in your mouth, and like, that's a pretty fucking depressing place to be. I know that, like, I'm not happy. You know, it's Joe fucking Biden up there. Uh, but I was very happy to just keep tweeting you mad at Trump supporters. So that's been what's really keeping me going in these I, last few I, I days simply, of COVID. I, I, I searched for the phrase bet on Trump and found people who had put money on Trump winning. And I sort of spent a pleasant <laughs> afternoon uh, quote tweeting each of them with a cringe emoji. Nice. Yeah, I just some people put a lot of money on Trump winning, by the way. And I also put a million pounds on Biden. They still haven't paid him, which is actually kind of amusing. Uh, um I just uh it's important to not lose sight of making fascists upset. Um so yeah, take joy where you can get it. Obviously, um, I don't know how realistic pushing Biden to the left is. I assume <laughs> not very. My goodness, yeah. no. Yeah. I just but, want um, to say congrats to President Mitch McConnell. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. And uh, if there's anyone in the Democratic Party leadership who, for God forbid, listens to this podcast, hit me up because I, I got some words to tell you. <laughs> Damn, yeah, uh, Mitch McConnell gets a 20 minute meeting in his office with Gina Haspel. You get Liam. Nancy Pelosi yeah, we, gets yeah. Liam. We, we, go through I, our, we go through our Patreon uh, donors and realize. Holy shit, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Hey, we can talk about our we can talk about our challah recipes. Uh, I will say, as a fun aside, and I know we're trying to keep this brief, and I thought you would like this, that uh, my girlfriend's sister used to intern for a, a, a congressperson, and he had a special suit. He was a Democratic congressperson uh, for when he was going to get yelled at by Nancy Pelosi. Who <laughs> apparently, when she actually like loses her temper and starts yelling at you, is terrifying. And I love the idea, you know, as much as she sucks, of Nancy Pelosi, of all people, giving you the Johnson treatment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she oh just whips a dick out on the desk. Uh, hey, you know, if you, you, you want to negotiate uh, Salt One, we can do this. I know that's anachronistic. Shut the yeah. fuck up. I'm very Tell tired. it to Jumbo, you know? Prepare to meet Jumbo. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be very confusing if you don't know that LBJ called his dick Jumbo. Yes. Uh, you're not going to call it tiny, you know. This I is don't true. Know. That, would be, that would be that would be a good irony post, I think. Little buddy, yeah. yeah. Someone right. needs to do one of those. Um, what, <laughs> you know, like the 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 Alexander Hamilton, but he's trans. Oh uh, no! Image. Do one of no. those for LBJ. No. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Someone's gonna do that because of you. 
I, I am, I, I'm wondering how he deal, how she, how they deal with their dysphoria. Uh, well, that's why the long what? phone calls to the tailor about pant fitting. Uh, <laughs> don't like that at all. I'm sorry I spoke this into existence. <laughs> you fucking should be. The lathe <laughs> hopping between podcasts here. Oh, God. All right. In other news. I just want to say this as a public service <laughs> announcement. Do not, under any circumstances during this pandemic, take the Reading Blue Mountain and Northern Railroad. Yeah, because they um, gave you COVID. They probably did gave, give me COVID. We don't know I, yet. To what, be fair, yeah, I, I don't, I don't have any symptoms. It's been about, it's been four days now. You have um, defeated the coronavirus in yeah. single combat, but they did give you the COVID. Apparently, Congratulations. yeah, you're president now. This is a set of four, three rail diesel, uh, rail diesel cars from the Bud Company, and my friend and I, and one of her friends, went to, we went from the, we went from Reading, Pennsylvania, to Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, on these, right. And everyone was lined up to get in the cars. They all had masks on. And then, you know, I figured, okay, they're going to do social distancing. They're going to do all this crap. No, they packed this train full of people. It was about 80 seats in each car. And they had someone sitting in every single one. And that every great seat- advantage of trains that you can fit a lot of people in them. Suddenly yeah. now they're disadvantage. I know, right? And all of them were Lost like 60, 65 year old people with like Trump shirts on and shit. They tell all the, took their tell, masks tell off. The, tell the people what you called them. The goddamn fossils. Well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it was kind of ironic that all of them were wearing I will never get the novel coronavirus t shirts. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> what I don't get is they. They were all wearing masks outside, and then when they got on the train, they took the masks off. And I, I don't know, there's there something about this, there's something about the human <laughs> brain that doesn't work well with, like, putting the thing on indoors. You, you like, you take the thing Can off when you get bro. indoors. Like, um, the, the new Secretary yeah. of Defense, like, because Trump fired Mark Esper for not wanting to do a coup or something, arrived at the Pentagon, Very uh, normal. Tri- tripped over his dick on the first step, and then immediately walked up the stairs and took his mask off. So, like, that's... I think it's just ape brain stuff. It just it's in there, you know. You come into a warm enclosed area, you like take an item of clothing on your outer layer off. It was two hours and thirty mm-hmm. minutes to get to Jim Thorpe, and then it was uh, two hours and thirty minutes back after Raven was drunk, and they were yelling at each other on the way back. And like, uh, o- old man actually asked me to close my window because <sighs> he was getting cold, and I was like, "What the fuck, dude!" Like, like. No, I, no, it's not worth it. It's, this it's is not, not the, worth the it. Finest, yeah. The finest medical science of the 16th century eludes that guy. You can't close the fucking window, dude. You're going to get miasma. Yeah, exactly. You're going to get miasma. You're going to get theory dude, has your been proven correct be by this pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> My God, I I, I was very confused. You were going confused. to lose. Bi- you posted cringe. You were going to lose bile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone please draw. Instead of drawing, instead of drawing the LBJ thing, please draw the three of us in plague doctor masks with that caption. <laughs> <laughs> and safety helmets. Yes. That's it, yes. Uh, I don't know where they're gonna go on the on the on the bird mask, but you uh-huh. know. And a man in Jim Thorpe yelled at me for jaywalking. Like what actually brought jaywalking? me aside and yelled at me for jaywalking. I was like, I I don't know what this is. We don't have this crime in my country. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is my this is my public service announcement. This would be a very nice trip if not for COVID, but COVID was occurring. So do do not take Reading Blue Mountain and please, Northern. They do no, not acknowledge do not do the this. disease exists. Okay. That was the goddamn news. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Strong first showing here. Yes. Uh, Tag yourselves. Oh, yeah, I'm Professor right. Fate. That's that's right. You wanted the Professor Fate car in here, and I just Yeah, I did want the Professor Fate car in here. What is the Professor right. Fate car? It's from uh The Great Race. It's a film from 1965, I think, about an old um like early 1900s uh, long distance car race from New York to Paris. Um, And it's sort of a slapstick comedy, you know? 
It's a good movie. It is a good movie. It has one of the greatest sword fights ever filmed and the largest pie fight ever filmed. Huh. Well, <laughs> official movie <laughs> recommendation then. Yeah, that's yeah, one of 12 movie. movies he's seen. I know, right? <laughs> Moving on up. <laughs> so, uh, L- Liam, take take it away. You you did the notes for the slide. I just decided to put the Hannibal Twin 8 on there instead. Oh, fuck. Yeah, all right. Hold up. Where am I? Uh, yeah, no, I got it. Roll Tide. Uh, so... <laughs> So, Uh-oh. so yeah, so motor racing, uh, honestly, basically begins when cars are invented. So the late 1800s, um, Daimler and, and Benz, obviously <laughs> the first organized race is actually in 1894, uh, in France, uh, France? Uh, uh, yeah, it's a road race. the guy, the, the average pace, uh, is a blistering, like 12 miles an hour. I don't have this in the notes, but it took them like six and a half hours to. <laughs> oh, great you um, you invent motorsport and immediately create the indy 500 yeah i uh, but uh but enough about that let's talk about the guy, guy on a horse still wins <laughs> let's talk about the 1903 paris to madrid race uh where everybody fucking dies yes uh, this is in yes. this is in the group b slides too so i'm gonna talk yeah. about this twice <laughs> yeah so the 1903 uh, Paris to Madrid race is great because the the French prime minister doesn't want this to happen. There's pressure from the French public and uh, King Alphonse of Spain. Uh, the French public's rationale is well, because with the French and with the I, I'm going with Germans. Uh, <laughs> oh, oui, oui, best in the world, the buildings a car. Oh, oui, oui. Uh, so that's tight. I. Uh, and then half the fucking cars crash. Yes, yeah, like if you've ever <laughs> read about <laughs> early Tour de France or like early, just even the Olympics used to be like this. It was a slapstick ass time in human history, and all the more so when you include like early mechanical engineering. Yeah, uh, eight people die. <laughs> <laughs> they have to cancel the race to the point where they like restarted at the Spanish border and won't even allow the drivers to restart their engines. Um, yeah, just get out and push. Force, yeah, basically. To put uh, a hard, actually, have a mule pull it. <laughs> this introduces, uh, in the French consciousness at least, the uh, uh, concept of speed limits. Huh. Uh, and there's discussion if there should be speed limits during racing. Obviously, if you're a coward, that's what you should do. Uh, after this, public road racing, at least in France, is cancelled. Kind of across Europe, obviously there's the outbreak of World War I. Um, yeah, and then difficult the mule, to race over the trenches. Yes. yes, the Mille Miglia, or Melia, I don't hey, speak the Italian. Mille Miglia. Yeah, well, I'm not a fucking fascist, so. <laughs> Shouts to Noah, but, uh, uh, the, that restarts in 1927, uh, because of two young counts. Mussolini actually cancelled it, because a bunch of people died in 37. Normally, I would be shot for being Italian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then hung upside down at a gas station, so who says cars are good for nothing? <laughs> uh, and that ends in 1957. Next slide, please. Man, I wish I had more than one monitor. All right. <laughs> so you may see uh, Alice, you're up here, if you'll notice that girling uh, banner. <laughs> yes. I do be doing that. Yes. Uh, so you may be wondering to yourself why these dudes are sprinting to their cars. This is called a Le Mans start. This is how they fucking do it. You line up, you run out of your car, you jump in, you start it, and then away you go. A uh, little bit of hit, side note here. When safety harnesses were introduced in the 1960s, a bunch of drivers just said, fuck it. And like, yeah, never I'm not put spending them in. the extra few but, seconds at the start uh, doing yeah, a five so point a harness. Of, a bunch of people died <laughs> just doing that. Like, I really can't stress enough that, like, while it's less deadly than historically has been, like, the, the, uh, the Le Mans race is absolutely just hilariously dangerous in ways that kind of don't make any sense. I also see down here Cop Soloy hmm. uh, and Lucas Electric. Uh, obviously, you also notice that they're lined up according to their country, because uh, this is sort of one of the great pride of nations races. Yeah, and that post war, yes. like post World War One, post World War Two vibe of this is what we're doing instead of war is. Oh, we'll get back to the war. This actually yeah. plays a role. <laughs> oh, good. 
Yeah, the German show up with a Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana Jones just kicking ass right into the Le Mans track. No ticket. <laughs> Great fucking movie. Yeah, uh, a second so, movie recommendation. One of the I 12. have seen some movies. I have seen some movies. Uh, more than Roz has. Uh, yes. So, Le Mans is launched in 1923. Um, God, we so should just do a bonus episode where we talk about good disaster movies. That would be fun. We oh. got we could watch Crazy Eights or something. Oh yeah, and MST three K it. Um, well, you mean Unstoppable? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Crazy Eights was the real incident. <laughs> right, my bad. <laughs> uh, so in contrast to sort of earlier races of the day, uh, where you're just sort of purpose built race cars as fast as possible or close to uh. You know, you're not really worried about like fluids and stuff like that because you're just sort of going forever. Uh, this is really hard because you have to, you can't always stop for fluids. In the beginning, you had to do at least, uh, you had to go at least an hour without stopping for fluids. So you have to balance efficiency, endurance, speed. Um, you know, there's some, yeah, the track, the track is relatively fast, especially. Or actually, counter to that, the track is relatively slow. There's a lot of like not especially well ta- well maintained road services, which are going to play a role um, in the uh, in the crash that we're going to talk about. Uh, it's absolutely hot as hell. Uh, this takes place in uh, June, July, so you're talking about the f- French heat. Cars that are very delicate that have to run for a huge amount of time. Uh, guys that are run like two drivers now it's up to three uh one of the guys here almost wins le mans in i believe 52 by himself <laughs> having driven for 23 hours straight and the funny the crazy thing i learned about le mans in the beginning was that it was three consecutive 24 hour races <laughs> <laughs> yeah because that's how you did an endurance challenge like genuinely I'm that's not- very new that's basically across the continental united states and back mm-hmm and like this is the thing, right? This is also true of rally. It's like one of these things that diverged, right? But like in both cases, uh, the idea was whether you're on a track or just on roads, the point of a race is to destroy as many cars as possible and kill everyone. Uh, yes. Actually, providing entertainment to people watching is a very distant third. <laughs> well, yeah. NASCAR manages to combine these um, pretty well. Uh, <laughs> Um, so that's what I have just as like background on Le Mans and how it sort of is specific in, in the, in the, it's like, it's kind of quirks. So Roz, you did this one if you want to talk all about right, it. All right. So we're going to talk about the actual Le Mans, uh, track. All right. So the circuit de la Sarth, Sart, Sart. I don't know how to no, pronounce it's Sarth. It's Sarth. It Sarth. I've decided I am not a friend <laughs> of the French anymore. That makes sense. All right, so we start up here. What you see is a sort of this is a modern view. This is sort of a modern racetrack here called the Bugatti Circuit that was not built until the 60s, right? Um, in 1923, the first Le Mans occurred, right? And that was actually on a slightly longer circuit than what there is now. They'd start around here, they went down into the city of Le Mans itself along oh, the um, Rue de Lagne. Lang, <laughs> Lang, <laughs> yeah, and th- then came back on Avenue George Durand, which was renamed that at some point, right? Um, later, they built, they decided to bypass the city because it's a bad idea to drive cars at extremely high speed through the city. Um, Monaco does it just fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So after that, they go down something we know is in, in English as the Mulsan Strait. This is about six kilometers long. You go straight, very very until fast. you get a, get to a ninety yeah. degree corner at the end, right? Yeah. Uh, cars have uh, achieved very 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 high speeds at this location. They've um, had to they've had to add the chicanes because cars were regularly yeah. going so fast they they lift off. There's another crash uh, in 1999. A Mercedes GTR is coming over a hill and air pushing up lifts his car he's flown i don't know like like i've seen the video a million times but like 
50, 75 linear feet going whatever, 200 miles an hour. And he walks away on skates, which I think is a testament to like how cars are built now and how they weren't built then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, like you did, you do that in like a 50s car, that guy's chunky marinara. But there's a dichotomy here, right? Because in addition to, you know, the, the modern cars lift off, some of the older cars, the, the main problem was you, you had a spoiler, if you had a spoiler on the back and you were going very, very, very fast, it would just put so much force on the rear tires, they just shred, right? <laughs> yeah, so, we'll, we'll get there with the Mercedes, because yeah, that's exactly. how it breaks apart, essentially. So, so like, um, the highest speed that was achieved here was right before the chicanes were installed in 1990. Uh, someone hit 253 miles an hour Jesus. on the street in 1988, right? Uh, and there's a lot of this course. You keep going, you go up this road, you get up to here, you make a cart turn, you go up here, you go over here, you're going around, you go through a couple other bullshit up here, which I can't see from this resolution, <laughs> right? You know, and then you come back to pit lane, which is right here, which is where today's incident is going to occur. Um, <laughs> and I will be your incident for today. Yes. So, you know, in a lot of the course, you're going full throttle, right? The car is, the car is completely full throttle for a lot of the course. You know, for a long time, a lot of the roads were not so well maintained, so you're going slower today. It's a very, very, very fast course. Um, that's one of the reasons why it's so challenging is because you're running the car full throttle for such a long time, right? So you need, like, an intensely reliable vehicle to do this well. Um, and an intensely reliable driver who can concentrate and not fall asleep in between getting shot full of horse whatever in the fucking pit lane. Yeah, exactly. Well, while, while being uh, fed a bunch of strychnine like their uh, St. Louis marathon runner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, here's the modern pit lane up here, right at the top. Today, pit lane is a separate... Uh, uh, area, right? You can see there's like a barrier between the pits and the main uh, racetrack here, right? So to give you more of an idea of what the configuration was at 19, in 1955, you can see there's a public street over here. This is the Rue de Lagne, Lagne, Lagne whatever. <laughs> the, Rue de, the Rue de Gurnlagen. The Rue de French thing, right? And you can see that that continues through, it diverts around the race course and then comes back down to the same alignment, right? In 1955, the street went straight, this rue, the rue went straight through, right? Because oh, you, were just, you were just Mandu, yes. Because uh, you were just racing <laughs> on good, ordinary man. streets. <laughs> Sacre bleu. Yes. So it's an ordinary public road. It has some special, you know, markings on it for where pit lane was said to be. It was a little wider so they could fit the pits in there, but there was no barrier between pit lane and the main race course. Um, there's no, there's nothing, nothing like you would see in a modern race course. And then there was a four foot uh, earthen berm between the spectators and the race course. Ooh. We'll sort of see how that was configured in the next slide. What a berm? But, you never really yes. hear about berms <laughs> these days. Shout out to mm. Berms. Yes, well... You just like saying Berms, huh? I really like saying Berms. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. <laughs> See, here's, here's the Berm right here. Man, that's um, not a big Berm at all. I mean, I realize no, those are small cars, but still. Yeah, and I, I don't love how, you know, they're, they're, they're seemingly... Uh, that four feet doesn't seem like it's going to make much of a difference, say, if a car goes... Hurtling by you at one twenty-five or so. Yeah, you get your hair must, <laughs> you know. It's like when a high-speed train comes through, you know. Well, I, I mean, people aren't usually racing high-speed trains. Well, I you mean, know, not with that attitude. Have a, they have a limited ability to diver- diverge from a set path. <laughs> Why do you hate the T one, Roz? <laughs> All right, uh, Liam, this one's you. Oh Jesus! Everybody, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, this is just a a picture of the sort of the the start. Uh, I just wanted to include this to get the the same idea of uh, that that berm. So 
for people that are gonna uh matter, we've got the number twenty six car Austin Healy, number nineteen over. Yeah, I know you can't annotate it, so Ross, you could circle these, or I can't uh, annotate it. Uh, um, nineteen. Which one's nineteen? Right. Uh, it's kind of the back left. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right here. Yeah. And then I want you to do 22. That's Pierre Leve, who is sort of uh, he's racing 22. for Mercedes. Uh, Mercedes had sort of invited him. He He's sort of the folk hero. Uh, he's an older guy. He's a guy I mentioned who very nearly won Le Mans sort of by himself, which is absolutely crazy. Um, he's a Frenchman. Remember, World War Two had sort of just ended. And that's actually going to play a part in some of the weird tensions that come out during and after the race. Um, this features um, Sterling Moss at the top of his game, uh, Juan Malfangio, Mike Hawthorne racing for Jaguar, Ferrari at the top of their game, Mercedes at the top of their game. Uh, Mercedes, and we'll talk about it in a couple slides, is, uh, has introduced the 300 uh, SLR, which is an absolutely bonkers race car. It has an air brake system. It's made out of magnesium. Uh, Jag- uh, Mike Hawthorne, who's driving for Jaguar, uh, hates Mercedes because he is a good Englishman. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, this is uh, this is going to play a part in how sort of everything unfolds and where blame gets shifted. Wait, did the, ang- is, it, is this one the Anglo's fault? Is this us? World War Two? I don't know. No, did not you, World you, War Two. The fucking did you, the incident. Did you, did you did you fight amongst getting bailed out? Well, I mean, yes, <laughs> obviously. Yes, I Look, the the yes, World War Two was Woodrow Wilson's fault. Let's get real. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, not it was also from Bismarck. Uh, I will say, uh, I love one of my favorite weird questions, and I try not to do the armchair general thing. It's like after the Battle of Britain, Hitler's just like, nah, fuck this, man. Like, I'm just not, I'm just not going to do it anymore. I'm going to, I'm going to yeah, go. Yeah, because he was a small bean who had ADHD and was just like, yeah, yes. whatever. That's a cut off her mic. Cut off her mic. <laughs> I'm not hearing the phrase small bean again. All right, let's get a uh, intersectional Hitler image uh, somewhere in the no, chat. Uh, yeah. No one made it, but they're a Nazi. Uh, <laughs> So uh, the Jaguar and the Mercedes are are going really, uh, really at each other. This is it's worth noting. This is an endurance test and neither team is especially treating it like one. Uh, so uh, disaster ensues on lap 35. But before we get there, next slide, please. Let's talk about the car. Yeah, let's talk about the Mercedes in question. Imagine doing that shit with just like a leather helmet and goggles, though. Yeah, this yeah. is uh, uh, the one. The one fact I have here is that I, uh, one of the ones I have is that this thing ran on a, ma- a mixture of gasoline and benzene. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, sixty-five percent gasoline, Nazi rocket fuel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You just, yeah. you just I, strap the guy into the fucking V four rocket. <laughs> that guy's yeah. teeth are ninety percent bug by weight by this point. I, I don't oh, yeah. know much about chemical bullshit because i studied economics like a good boy uh what does benzene do again it's just really lethal right it's just real bad for you it it stays around in the environment a long time um it's toxic in high quantities and usually there's high quantities of it um benzene is we we talked about this in an earlier episode i forget which one i was just yeah well like uh benzene benzene. huh yeah oh Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, so this thing is is truly like a marvel of engineering. Uh, it can do 150 plus. Keep in mind the track had basically not been upgraded since the 20s. Yes. So at the time, cars were doing 60, not 150. Uh, so there's very little room for error, as we'll see. The truck that had genuinely seen just like very minor modifications since 1923. Uh, super lightweight because it had a, a steel tube space frame, and then uh, the bodywork was built out of a magnesium alloy called Electron. Huh. This really helping yourselves here. Uh, and it deployed the first air brake. So at a certain the speed, back. the brake come yeah, the brake comes down or deploys and applies downforce, which helps you from lifting off 
and doing what the the G the whatever Mercedes GTR, did in ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, where you the air so, comes under and you just go flying. Uh, he's gonna go flying regardless, mm. but uh, we'll see why. But yeah, I reject and, modernity, embrace tradition. <laughs> yes. and, uh, and to be clear, the reason why everything is made out of magnesium is because it's very light. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's right, why exactly. That's so can, why I included a yeah. slide. Yes, about please. Chemistry. 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 All right, let's go. Uh, not not in the uh, not in the. Uh, not in the, the romantic sense, in the chemistry sense. <laughs> um, okay, so, magnesium. It's element 12, that's MG up here, right? Uh, it is an alkaline earth metal that's in group, group 2, which is this column here on the periodic table, right? It's the ninth most abundant element in the universe, um, and it's, it's a metal, right? Alkaline earth metal. It has a low atomic weight, which means it has a very high strength to weight ratio, right? If you alloy it with other elements, that can increase this property further. But the fun chemical property, of course, group two means, in layman's terms, all these elements have two extra electrons. So they like to form bonds over here with group 16, right? And group 16, of course, includes oxygen which is fairly abundant in the atmosphere, thank God. Um, <laughs> For now. Because otherwise we'd be dead. Yeah, I know, right? Um, so group 16 is missing two electrons, so, you know, they, they have a mutual interest in forming bonds, right? And this is a fun and exciting exothermic process. Oh, that see, we, that we came reaction... back to uh, economics after all. We're doing rational self-interest. Yes. So it's an exothermic reaction. The reaction generates heat, right? So magnesium, like it's relatively stable on its own, but it will ignite very easily in the presence of oxygen. Usually it forms a thin layer of magnesium oxide around the magnesium rather than catching fire, but it will catch fire fairly easily. It burns very brightly and at a very, very high temperature. Um, but again, it's hard to ignite in bulk because it forms this coating, right? Um, so. So yeah, big block won't ignite, but a thin sheet like car body work. Oh will. boy. Yeah. Oh boy. Now, let's say you've got a magnesium fire, right? And you're like, I don't want this magnesium fire. I want to put out <laughs> this magnesium me. fire. Yeah, I, I don't like it. I, I think this is going to cause me some problems. I think there should not be fire here, right? Say it's in your living room or something. Um, so the first thing you might think is, well, you know, fire doesn't like water, right? Yeah, I'm going to try put and pour the, some water on there. Put the wet stuff on the red stuff. Yeah, exactly. And you think this is fairly logical, but the, the thing is, you 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 don't you don't you don't put out the fire that way because magnesium reacts exothermically with the water, right? Because magnesium oxide. Um, so it will react with the water to produce heat and magnesium hydroxide, right? And hydrogen gas. Oh, that sounds foreboding. Because that's a, that's the new preferable configuration the oxygen thinks is good. <laughs> so, and the thing is, of course, number one, this reaction produces heat. Number two, this reaction produces hydrogen gas. So rather than extinguishing the fire, what you've done is made this fire significantly worse. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is this not also the case that uh, in some cases the flames are not visible to the human eye? Oh no. Magnesium blinds you. Yeah. Well, it's I so guess bright. that's one way of not being visible. Yes. What am so I, you're, what you're am I thinking of correct. then? Because there was one motorsport thing where, uh, like, some fuel product started burning, but, like, not with a visible flame. And so there's, like, trackside video of, like, the driver, like, running around on fire and nobody can work out what's going on until eventually someone hits him with a fire extinguisher. Might be some ethanol based. I'm yeah, not could sure. Be. I'm not, I, I, I. Say, say in the comments what it was. Um, uh -oh. So, okay, so the water hasn't worked. Let me try my CO2 fire extinguisher, right? 
Let's try the CO2 fire extinguisher. Carbon dioxide puts out fire, right? Well, this is also bad news because magnesium is so reactive that it strips the O2 off of the carbon. Oh, boy. Reacts exothermically with it, and it produces, you know... Just raw carbon, magnesium oxide, and of course more heat. You've so, inadvertently created a carbon fire extinguisher. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so so you you you've made the fu- so yeah, water doesn't work on it, CO2 doesn't work on it. The only reliable way of extinguishing a magnesium fire is to dump sand or some kind of dry chemical extingu- uh, uh, extinguishing chemical on the fire throw a blanket it over out, it right? like a chip pound fire well i mean it has to be a non-flammable blanket <laughs> <laughs> just because of the sheer heat it's producing you know because your magnesium fire is is on a whole other level than like an ordinary fire i mean you're you're looking at you're you're looking at i want to say three thousand degrees uh celsius or something like that i i it, yeah, it's it's very, 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 very hot. So, uh, lots of conventional firefighting techniques do not work on it. Um, now, you can alloy magnesium with other metals, and you can reduce some of these undesirable properties, like being extremely flammable. You can increase its strength. Um, but these properties are not eliminated if there's a major fire, right? And that's what Electron was. It was a magnesium alloy. So, you know, it wasn't like going to catch fire just from sitting around. But, you know, if for some reason a race car had a fire that was intense, you might have some problems. Liam, this is yours. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sorry, I was texting someone. (laughs) Uh, I, I was just I'm enjoying not. the like rain noise. Is that what that is? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, this is again. This is just something I put in sort of for illustrative purposes, as we're gonna see. Uh, this is the Austin Healy 100s. Um, <laughs> this is the car that the Mercedes is gonna ramp off of. Uh, you can see it sloped to the back, which does in fact act as a ramp. Yeah, we've uh, we've all played GCA. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I mean, I I really have in here like you do the math just because like it's clear to see like how this is gonna go. Um, it did sell in two th- the the car involved. I didn't use it. I didn't use a picture of it just because I wanted to show sort of the side profile. That car actually sold for I believe one point three million dollars. That's what you're paying the, a lot of like, money for a ghost. Yeah, it's well, it's supposedly not a cursed car because no one died in it. Yeah. Um the the Austin Healy driver ended up being a little shaky but more or less fine once he uh, he I think uh, hit a wall or an embankment, but they pulled him out with very little injury. Um that said, next slide please. You just have a picture of a D-type here. Yeah, I have a picture it's of cool. the ah, It's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. D- Love D-type, a Jack, yeah. Yeah. So- it's another 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 car did involved say, in the incident. Jaguar? Jaguar, yes. Jaguar. 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 It's a Jaguar. It's a Jaguar. No, it's a Jaguar. I'm from America, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I accept that Jaguar might be a fucked pronunciation of like the animal, right? But it's a British company. Yeah. You should it's have to Jaguar. use our fucked up pronunciation. Now, this is the Jaguar D-Type. Uh, it is another <laughs> type of car which is involved in the accident in question. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks, so, man. One of the things about the Jaguar D-Type is um, it had very, very good brakes. Um, so Jaguar had actually won previous Le Mans uh, almost purely on the strength of the brakes in the car, right? Because brakes are very important in race cars. The faster you can slow down, the more time you can spend at speed, right? Uh, If you can slow down the car faster, you can get through that part where you slow down faster and you can get back up to speed faster. You know, brakes, brakes are a safety device, but they are also important for going fast, right? Right, because the better you can brake, 
obviously the quicker you can stop so on you can regain speed quicker and get so on and so forth yeah you, you have to you have to leave behind the mario kart logic when you're actually doing real racing right one of the reasons that made it very good is it had these things called it had these things called disc brakes right which you can see here this has ferrari calipers but obviously in real life this would say uh, a jaguar on them right <laughs> so this is the difference between the jaguar and the Mercedes. The Mercedes had drum brakes, right? And drum brakes are an older design. They had very, very large drum brakes, large enough that they couldn't actually fit them on the tires. They were actually connected by a half shaft to the unsprung part of the vehicle. That's the part of the vehicle which is, you know, sort of the main body, or excuse me, the sprung part of the vehicle. Unsprung part of the vehicle is the tire and stuff that wheels, shit like that. wheels yeah. and stuff like that. And then the sprung part of the vehicle is the, um, you know, the body, the frame, so on and so forth. The stuff that's, you know, past the suspension, right? So the drum brakes were, um, you know, this is an older design. It's still common to this day. Uh, drum brakes are prone to brake fade, right? Which is when your brakes stop working over a period of time because... The drum, the drum is sort of a, uh, well, it's a, a metal drum that goes around the outside of what you're seeing here, right? Um, it tends to deform when it's under heat, right? Oh, the thing the that breaks expansion. never are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is the problem. The yeah, breaks they they get hot and then stuff changes shape, which is not good. And of course, drum breaks. All of this is enclosed usually, right? So it's also harder to ventilate the brakes, get cooling in there, right? So as you're racing for longer, and of course this is a big problem over a 24-hour race, these brakes get less and less effective, right? Um, now your, your, your Jaguar, your Jaguar <laughs> had these disc brakes, right? And disc brakes, again, they heat up, but because the disc is exposed to airflow, they cool down a lot quicker, right? Um, you know, the, the, the caliper here also isn't affected by, like, changes in shape of the disc in mm -hmm. quite the same way that drum brake is, They also look is, way right? cooler because you can see the caliper heat up and so this will just go yes. screaming past you and you'll be like, huh, this is the thing in the wheel is glowing orange. That's very yes. red. <laughs> That's dope. No, oh, yeah. Disc brakes def definitely, they look cooler, they work better, all together a very, uh, very, very, very much a better braking system. Um... And oddly enough, like uh, disc brakes, actually, they work a little better when they have a certain amount of heat in them. Um, that's why you know if 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 they're if if they're heated up enough that they will deform a little bit, um, the calipers can get a better grip on them. Hmm. Um, so you know you actually want some heat in these guys when you're running. Um, you don't want too much heat because then, you know, it'll melt, but this is 1955. So a lot of the science wasn't necessarily super well understood. Yeah. It's all uh, being done by thing. guys in shirt sleeves with martinis. Yeah, exactly. Right. In a shed. Yeah. Um, but the disc brakes, you know, they ran cooler. They had a lot more stopping power and they were not subject to brake fade. Right. So. This becomes an issue round about lap 35, right? Well, not about lap 35, at lap 35. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's so, been a while since we got an actual crash diagram. Um, I'm so happy. All right, so remember, we're entering pit lane. Pit lane has no separation, right? So we got Hawthorne. Hawthorne's in the jag with the good brakes, right? That's the green guy here, right? Behind Hawthorne is Macklin, who's in the Austin Healy, right? Then we got LeVay. He is in the first Mercedes here. Behind him is Fangio, right? Fangio is in the, Merce the second Mercedes, right? So Hawthorne raises his hand. He's in the, um, 
the first car here, he says, I'm going to go into pit. He's already kind of bracing to, to just stick your hand in the, the air out of like an open top car. Yeah, I wouldn't love that. I know, right? Um, and as he does that, he, he, you know, he's, he, he says, I'm going into the pit. He raises his hand to indicate he's going into the pit. He hits the brakes and, you know, they're good disc brakes. So, you know, they slow down the car real fucking quick, right? Um, so Macklin, who's right behind him, is like surprised at how, how, how quickly he's slowing down. He actually has to swerve to avoid him, right? And this is uh, there. Some of this is a bit disputed as to what exactly happened, right? Um, but once he once he swerved, he momentarily lost control of his car, and he winds up in front of Leve back here, who's you know, of course, going about 120 miles an hour, right? Didn't think he was going to have to deal with any of this shit. So Leve's car smashes into Macklin, right? Um, the front wheel ramps up onto the Austin Healy and it flies up in the air. Um, now it, 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 uh, some accounts say like uh, Lavez's last act as a living person was to indicate to Fangio to go around. God, which, that's dire. Yeah, yeah, which Fangio managed to do. Um, he, he, he got through this completely unscathed and then later lived to be, uh, kidnapped by the Cuban communist party who, who, who he made friends with his kidnappers. That's a funny story. Um, <laughs> cause Batista was actually just that bad. Um, and also the race that they kidnapped him from probably would have killed him because there was a huge wreck at that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, communists won motorsport zero. Yes. Oh, they maintained like a, a letter correspondence for for like the rest of Pancho's life. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Leve, right, smashes into Macklin. Uh, he sort of ramps up off the Austin Healy. That you can long see sloping he trunk. Yeah. 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 Not not going well. Uh, and then Macklin hits the other wall, ricochets off. I think he just scrapes by the uh, the Jaguar, Jaguar right here, <laughs> right? Yeah. Ja 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 Jaguar. Jaguar. It's a Jaguar. Mm -hmm. So, all right. The main thing here is Levea has hit the wall. Right, and the wall here in this case is that four foot earth berm, right? And he bounces along it for a while. Um, it clears the berm, and then it, you know, it hits a concrete stairwell for the grandstand that is right on the other side. Oh boy. Levet was thrown clear of the accident, but immediately killed when uh, his skull impacted the ground first. Yeah. Um, I mean, save that for your boomer uncle, who's like, yeah, I don't wear a seatbelt because I'll get thrown clear of the accident. Yeah, well, you know, it's like, the, it turns out roads are a hard surface. Yeah, a lot harder than airbags. Yes. <laughs> so, the car disintegrated when it hit the stairwell, but all the big heavy components, you know, the engine, the suspension, the tires, the frame, all this stuff, it still has momentum, right? So they plow into the crowd in the, in the grandstands, and kills they killed dozens of people like instantly. Yeah, the, the, apparently right. the magnesium hood uh, just yeah, goes flying here to head yes. height, and because it, it's mm -hmm. like catching air, because it's you know it's an airfoil. Uh, this sort yeah. of flying sharp wing of uh, of metal just goes through the and frisbee just, of death whoosh, straight off yeah. a little bit yep. off the top, you know. Um, yeah, a little oh. bit too much off the top. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Literally lowering someone's ears, yes. Yeah. So the, um, you know, of course this car, you know, it's in an endurance race, right? They got really big fuel tanks. I think they started out with something like 70 gallons of fuel in these things. Uh, they're not protected in fuel cells like they are today, right? Oh, of course, because that's, you know, that's cock shit. Why would you do that? That's extra weight. Yeah. Uh, yes. No. Gotta go fast. You gotta go fast. <laughs> so this fuel immediately ignited and became a huge raging inferno, right? Um, and of course the fire is intense enough that the electron bodywork 
all ignited into a big magnesium fire, right? This white hot magnesium fire and a bunch of shards of magnesium flew up in the air and then they came back down as sort of this white hot magnesium rain oh, fuck onto that. the grandstands. Yeah. Absolutely not. No, thank you. Yeah, so that burns and injures a whole shitload of people. Um, now, emergency crews were on the scene almost immediately and started spraying the wreck with water. Oh. Mm -hmm. Which made it like 10 times worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a kind of recurring feature. Did at least like relative to the other like firefighting uh, excellence that we've seen before, did this at least manage to not kill all the firefighters? I don't think any firefighters were killed on account of this. Oh, well, you know, um, this is not so bad. I do know oh, I, guess. I do know what's his face who was in the um in the Austin Healy, I think he, uh, after he got thrown off course, I think he ran over a police officer while he was trying to stop the car. <laughs> he, um, he, he was doing, he was suddenly doing praxis. Oops. <laughs> I did praxis. Yeah. <laughs> the fire burned for several hours, uh, just sort of resisted any attempt to, at containment whatsoever. They eventually were like, all right, well, I guess we'll let it burn out. Now keep in mind, they did not shut down the race. <laughs> No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Which would be like truly unthinkable today, but no, they just kept racing. Yeah. Imagine having to keep your eyes on the road at like 130 miles an hour with a magnesium I, fire off to well, one I side. Hawthorne, when he came back around, was like sobbing. Jesus. From what I had read. Yeah. They, yeah. It, like, yeah, because they made Hawthorne go around after he pitted. They were like, hey, you need to get away from the chaos for the moment. He, yeah, he did I, a full lap and came back around. He's like, oh force, shit, I've done this. Forcing them to continue yeah. the race was absolutely... We gotta, we gotta get you to do something safe. Why don't you drive this car at 120 miles an hour around this circuit okay. for a while? Okay, have fun. It's important to take time to decompress, I find. Yes. It's also the theme of our Bifid Dolphin episode. Oh. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Yeah, do some self care <laughs> <laughs> by not having your internal organs separate themselves violently from your your. That's your, right. Your, Is that cop on the left chest. actively in the act of tripping while this photo was taken? Yes, I think so. Clown that shoes. Looks like it, yeah. So when the dust cleared, there were at least eighty three spectators dead and another one hundred and seventy eight injured. Now you know it's bad Possibly, when they hit you with that at least. you know that's some yeah, melted together stuff there's lots of there's there's records of this incident that have not been unsealed till this day. Uh, a lot of eyewitness accounts said it must have been more than eighty three um, so all right, you know, so they're trying to clear out this accident scene, right? There's a special memorial mass for the victims almost immediately at a nearby cathedral, but they do not call off the race. <laughs> Again, I... Incredible. They continue the race. And, you know, because race organizers, they said, oh, we don't actually have the authority to call off the race. Also, they were afraid a lot of people might sue them. <laughs> um... At the very least, Mercedes-Benz had the dignity to withdraw from the race later that night, but uh, Jaguar did not, and Hawthorne won the race. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, there were some... obviously he didn't, like, he wasn't the proximate cause of this accident on purpose, but it's yeah. still pretty funny in a bleak sort of way to be, like, up there spraying yourself with the champagne, you know? There was uh, a famous photo that went around in the French uh, newspapers and magazines after this race showing Th uh, Hawthorne, uh, yeah, he he did take a couple big swigs from the big victory <laughs> champagne. Yeah, I, I was like kissing joking. a local girl, yes. <laughs> the, he, he does. <laughs> which, and they which, were, and the, the caption was, to your health. Huh. Which I don't blame him for, honestly. Like, I don't think he caused the accident. And I think maybe you do need to do some self care after this sort <laughs> That's of right. thing, yes. <laughs> especially if they weren't letting you not race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. After this race, um, 
there's some immediate blowback from a lot of European countries, right? Which is that France bans motorsport entirely, as does Germany, Italy, and Switzerland, right? Switzerland Until still can... has it banned pretty much to this day. I think they might have some yes. exceptions now, but it's still very illegal. You can do rally style racing where there's only one car on the track at once, and you can do. Um, Formula E they've allowed, huh. um, but most of these bands were, you know, we need to we need to ban this sort of thing until we can figure out what's going on. How do we make this safer, right? So, I don't think it was until the next year that really most of these bands were lifted. Um, they make some vague safety improvements. Um, I think Le Mans, uh, the the uh, the actual grandstands are reconstructed entirely in a new and safer fashion <laughs> out of um, asbestos yeah exactly right mm -hmm. they didn't really change the course though and the pit lanes mm -hmm. were still unprotected still oh yeah 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 they got there eventually after 55 they were unprotected it wasn't for 15 more years till they decided oh maybe maybe we should have a oh, special well. pit lane <laughs> as opposed to just having the pits out on the track Right, that's incredible. Your sort of immediate investigation was like, who who is at fault here, right? And all the racing teams blamed each other. The drivers blamed each other. Hawthorne People got sued for libel. Yeah, yeah. Hawthorne initially took responsibility. He thought he caused the accident like moments after it happened. Then afterwards, he's like, no, I didn't cause the accident. Um, the in, the formal investigation eventually says, well, this is a sort of tragic racing accident, right? No, no one could have, you know, there, there wasn't anyone here specifically at fault. It was just, you know, bad, bad safety, right? Bad everything, yes. Mm. You know, which yeah, the, the, that bomb by... just appeared on its own. Yeah, exactly. We don't know how it got there. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's just no, no one had, uh, no, no one had changed the design of the track for. 40 30 years, plus years and cars yeah. were three times as fast. <laughs> yeah, but that's nobody's fault. That's just force majeure. Exactly, right? Uh, insurance company's favorite. <laughs> Things happened. Yeah, people die. 83 people get guillotined by a flying hood. Yeah. Self care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like it, it this 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 killed 83 83 spectators plus the driver. Um, at least it is a horrible think... accident like it it, it it results in a year long ban of motorsport but it didn't result in a lot of material safety improvements for uh, Le Mans right um, and what it really took after this incident was decades and decades of ag adv advocacy by drivers for mo motorsport to become as safe as it is today right mm. you know because dangerous events are relatively cheap to run you know once you have these sort of ironclad safety laws that say look you need to spend money on safety um only I then can you life. run a safe event yeah <laughs> I, I, like this is going to be a recurring a theme we'll, we'll hear about it again when we talk in the bonus episode about group b it's also a thing in nascar to a certain extent it's a thing in formula one is that like yeah okay racing drivers might have a reputation as being you know like uh, thrill seekers, but like when your friends start getting killed in preventable accidents, you can organize and at times actually withhold your labor, and that's very powerful because who else is going to drive the fucking car? I'm not going to drive a race car. Yeah, I'm not going to scrub up. To, I'm I've not already crashed a race car no. once in my life. I don't. I'm not going to do it again. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I don't need to be a race car driving scab. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> they just inflate a big scabby the rat holding a green flag. Oh, that'd be funny. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. It'd probably be like, uh, I don't think racing has a big union culture. Nah. I mean, not as no, we know not, unions, not at the least. Safe place. Yeah. I don't know the the F one drivers association at times. I mean, it's 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 gone back and forth like any kind of uh, sport union. But like, yeah, they they they've been kind of successful at uh, mostly like things like the hands device, the uh, head and neck restraint that like stops you from just snapping your skull off at the back uh, when you get in a high speed crash. That's been quite successful. Um, although NASCAR drivers hated it, weirdly enough. Um, 
Like e e even knowing it would have like saved Dale Earnhardt's life, all, yeah. uh, all of these NASCAR drivers are like I'm not wearing that shit uh, until they act have, like had to make them with rule changes. They force them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm uh, Kimi Raikkonen. Uh, I'm in uh, the F1 Drivers Association <laughs> Local 102. <laughs> uh, <laughs> listen, leave us alone. We know what we're doing. <laughs> 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 oh my god but yeah so that was that was a little mon disaster wow this is a short episode yeah. it's wild Fuck. made it to like an hour I well, knew we, we had to go well we had to go quick we saw safety third I was about to say well I got an hour until I have to do my other thing so we could have discussion hmm. debate discussion uh about what safety, <laughs> good or bad? I would say good, tentatively no, neutral. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely say safety is good. Uh, I, I would further say that no, car I mean, bad. Yes, car crash worse. Mm -hmm. Car crash yeah, not good. I mean, I I think that that's part of it is that like even knowing full well like you've now seen eighty three spectators, you know, at l plus a driver at <laughs> least die. And you're still just like, nah, like this was a tragic and unavoidable accident, and uh, we're just not going to do anything to fix it. Which is an attitude that pops up a lot on the show. Is just, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, a lot of times we'll get the we'll get the dire warnings that something is amiss, and then they don't do anything about it. And it's like something really did happen, and like obviously, like I don't understand necessarily like the whole, you know, oh the, the like the overlooking i suppose and like man, we can't break with tradition of a 32 year old track for cars that like were clearly going yeah because that's the know, danger and like like it like it there. says on the back of your ticket motorsport is a dangerous event and i i would question to what extent like the entertainment value is separable from that danger right if you want no, I mean the entertainment value is in yeah. the danger. I think for a lot yes. of people, like a lot of people watch NASCAR for the big mm -hmm. one. Oh, fully. Yeah. If, if you if you want yeah, to I, like watch cars proceed safely around a track, you can be one of the freaks who get into the, who gets into touring cars. But like, no. <laughs> sorry, I just couldn't resist like huge slam on touring cars out of nowhere. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to watch a stock car, but like more boring. Mm. Well, I mean, that's the thing. You know, you think, wow, it'd be real. It'd be a lot better if NASCAR was actually stock cars. No. And you look at touring car no. racing, you're like, mm. no, no, actually, this I is actually, worse. I actually uh, <laughs> do hold that point, which is that I think you basically manufacturers enter as opposed to what they have now, and you say you can have, you know your car that costs under $30,000 with essentially whatever engine you choose to put in it and whatever, you know, <laughs> racing harnesses so yeah. on and so forth, fire suppression yeah. system, you would absolutely watch like a Ford, whatever the echo sport with a Ford GT engine crammed in there or like a 7.3 liter power stroke. Okay, diesel. That is You'd true. Watch that. That is I, true. Just, I just want to see like a, a, another, like whatever, whatever it was. I think it was a Pontiac with a 20 foot tall spoiler. <laughs> yes. Hold on, I'm going to use the restroom. I'll be right back. Oh, good, me too. Well, I guess I'll just go fuck Alice, myself. Alice, this then. is on you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, how's it going, everybody? I'm I, I'm just now helming this podcast by myself, solo, and I'm kind of I'm I'm thinking about how much to um to like contribute here and how much to hold back when it comes to motorsport for the Group B episode uh, about about rallying that uh, we're going to talk about, but like, it's interesting, the kind of, I don't know, uh, sort of fly-by-night culture that develops around, around these sorts of events, um, and I, I don't know, I think there's part, like, as much as it might have at that time pretended to be purely an endurance thing, um, I, I think I think Liam was right. I think there is an element of like waiting for the big one, right? You're you're trying to test these cars and these drivers to something very near destruction. Um, and you know, I I'm not sure how surprised you can be 
when uh when the result is oopsie whoopsie we made this bum uh our, our only safety measure for a you know giant magnesium fire um it's real bad folks hi i'm alice caldwell kelly that's right that's right you are what were you what were you telling the uh our, our listeners about oh i was i was like um I was just musing. I don't think I said anything coherent. Oh, good. Yeah, no. I, 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 I said that there were various like uh, traits involved in the scenes of the area and uh, <laughs> things of that nature. Like, it, it had a, I'm bad. It had a guys. Huge... Well, I'm you've been saying horrible things. About no, us. much. I, I, it, I, oh. I had a huge book report energy. Is what it did. Uh, I, I just did no. like a, <laughs> a solid like two to three minutes of nothing. Nice. In, con- in <laughs> conclusion, motorsport is a land of contrasts. Yes. Oxford's English Dictionary <laughs> defines motorsport as. <laughs> no, you do, you do Webster's like uh, like an uh, American. Yeah. This is America. I should have just, just talked shit about uh, touring cars instead. Yeah, I really want to drive like a, a Mercedes like W134 with a seven foot wide spoiler on it at like 45 like, miles an hour. I like the concept of touring cars. I don't like the implementation, mm. the execution. It's not, it's not as entertaining as I feel like it should be. Like the be. thing is, right, uh, because you don't have the, the, like, the space or the, the speed to do a lot of overtaking, what you end up with is this kind of like convoy thing, which is like NASCAR, except the ambient mm-hmm. danger isn't there. Like NASCAR, that's fine, because in that like pack of cars, they're all going at a fucking canted angle with a concrete wall on one side. Like, that could lead to a massively entertaining mass death event, whereas like touring cars just yeah. like, oh, one of them spun off into the, into the mud. Oh, that sucks. Like NASCAR also like yeah, those those uh those high speed wrecks like they don't they don't kill anyone, they barely injure anyone, but they are entertaining to watch. You're right. Oh yeah, especially with like the yeah. whole like the outer shell of those cars just get flies, you know? That's very entertaining. Yeah, that's yeah. A, sometimes into the wall. Sometimes bad stuff oh, happens. Yeah. Well I wonder if you could do touring cars on an oval track. That might work. You know? I would be interested to see it. Um I, I think that's something that's be- Yeah. If you have access to a large number of touring cars and an oval track, we have try them? try this out yeah. and let us know how it goes. Yes, setting ourselves up for a future um, safety third there. Yeah. F- f- future episode where we all become touring car drivers. <laughs> 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 we wind One up on Top Gear somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean BBC, if you're listening, clearly you need some people who are both. You need our but, help, yeah, yes. you need some people who are both not gonna be. Uh, the original Top Gear dickheads who are like impossible to work with and abusive and stuff, but also crucially are not cucks. And so, if you want to, and or pedophiles, as Chris Evans uh, may have been, he was in Epstein's Little Black Book. Huh? Oh my god! Not the actor. Not the actor. The BBC provider. Well, they, I, I, that could have been for perfectly legitimate reasons, I'm sure. Anyway, if you want to uncuck Top Gear, my <laughs> suggestion to you yes. is call us. Hi, hire us to present Top Gear. Yes. Yes. I will. I will happily present Top Gear. I don't know I'd if watch. I can put in put in the work that Jeremy Clarkson did, but I will. I will make an attempt. We'll do our best. <laughs> yeah. Just punching a guy for not bringing you the correct cheese stick. Yes. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Well, on that bombshell, <laughs> we have a segment on this podcast called Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. This is a safety third from an aquarium. Oh boy. <laughs> So I, I'm sure Liam will be happy about this one. <laughs> I, ju- I yep, just saw the slide. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am Squidward. <laughs> I no, I'm Squidward. <laughs> no, this is Patrick. <laughs> 
Shit killed Steve Irwin, man. I keep saying it. Is a stingray a fish? Um, I mean, look, in a in a spiritual sense, yes. In a biological sense, I don't know. Those are very strange ones because, like, uh, rays in general are ven- very friendly animals. Like, I, I, I was like, just really dislike Australians. Apparently, yeah. Well, I can't blame them. Um, <laughs> is is a stingray so. a fish? Uh, yes. No. No, but I don't like them anyway. Mm. Are they, they fish? Are fish? They are cartilaginous fish. Yeah, they they oh. killed Steve Irwin, Roz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're like, they're usually very friendly. Yeah, they're usually very friendly, <laughs> that's why they killed Steve Irwin. <laughs> you can't Look, judge the I, whole species. Y- y- yes, know, I can. You know who else is like murdered people? Is like house cats. Yeah, like, but I like house cats. I'm fine if they're murderers, so I don't give a shit about that. <laughs> <laughs> they probably deserved it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Before starting grad school, I worked at a fancy public aquarium, mostly doing animal feedings and being a bio lab technician. Okay. Please tell me this <laughs> well, isn't an orca public- story. <laughs> Is this an orca story? No. Okay, good. I've seen blackfish. More, more, more related. More related to what we're looking at. While what the public saw was really clean and fancy, the back rooms were not that way at all. There were tanks bowing out and held together by wood and metal beams to keep the glass from shattering. There were tank lights, which were tens of years old. There was improper drainage sterilization. In several cases. Heaters and other devices with known current leaks were just left in tanks because they were too hard to replace. I think that the lasting nerve damage... It's okay, it still works basically fine. In my left arm... Oh, it's from a combination of these leaky machines and an unsecured light falling into a tank I was working on twice. Fuck that. But no, thank After you. the second time I quit, you know? Fool me twice. Feel that. Feel that. (laughs) We were told not to unplug the lights when putting our hands in the tank for feeding because that's too often. Have they heard of a light switch? (laughs) You can just hit the... Okay. All of that is a side story, though. The real worrying incident was a couple months in, uh, in which we started having... A problem with venomous box jellyfish showing up in tanks. Oh. Well, you, you, that's why you got to <laughs> deploy the rocket launches. <laughs> no one knew where they came from. They'd probably hitched a ride on a shipment of exotics from East Asia. But once you have an infestation, it, be, it can be hard to get rid of. That's fucking weird to think of <laughs> box jellyfish as being like cockroaches or something, you know? <laughs> I've never had a jellyfish infest- infestation oh, in my I, house. I mean, I, I have one, but, that's but probably antibiotics are cleared I, it right up, so... Oh, I, d- I don't live in a giant vat of water, either. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you don't know, all jellyfish grow from little tiny polyps that can grow in the sealant of the tank, or on rocks, or on glass, basically anywhere. Once this issue cropped up, we tried bleaching the tanks. But oh, even no. after bleaching them, these fuckers came back. Jesus. And they're pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually they went away, but before that, my manager just started pouring the venomous jellyfish out into the set of drains that led to the sewers Whoa. and storm drains. Oh. <laughs> and, and from there into the ocean. <laughs> I expressed some concern about introducing invasive uh, species. Think lionfish, which came from a similar type of situation. Lionfish find it very uh, difficult to kill you, though. Um, box jellyfish, mm. not so much. No, no, yeah, they don't sweat it. Yeah. But my boss wasn't worried. He said they'll go through water treatment. Ignoring, of course, that our sewer system is old as hell, poorly maintained, and has floodwater influxes and outflows. Need I remind you that these things survive bleaching and drying and are a really toxic species? It's somebody else's problem now. 
Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> anyway, like a really no rickety really... grate holding back 50 box jellyfish. And just like one, <laughs> one screw is like getting slightly loose. Simply don't worry yeah. about it. I used to, when I was in high school, uh, I rode, I did crew because I'm a, you know, upper class twit. A wasp. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Uh, a Catholic wasp, the worst kind. A wasp. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the, uh, uh, we, we, we had a boathouse, which was right near a combined sewer overflow point. <sighs> you know, so if it rained too hard in Washington, D.C., all the sewage would dump directly onto our dock. <laughs> oh. um, Ugh. And I'm like, well, this is bad enough. I don't want jellyfish <laughs> <laughs> dumping on there as well. You're just gonna go and brush the like shit covered jellyfish away from your dock with a broom. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry exactly. about it. Don't worry about it. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Don't, don't look fall at it. in. <laughs> Do not fall in. Yeah, the Anacostia River was pretty bad to start out with, but then you know you add jellyfish in there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. No one really keeps a record of which jellyfish species are where, and we don't even know what exact species we kept releasing, so it could be years before we find out if they took a foothold on our coast. If they did, you'll have even less reason to swim in Florida. (laughs) Beautiful. An actual, honest-to-God, environmental disaster in the making. Whistleblown to us and not the EPA. Yes. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. I so uh, this is a top. Well, there's your problem. Top tip: don't release. Don't swim. Don't, don't swim. Don't, don't swim. Don't swim. Don't, spit. don't, don't release swim. jellyfish into the sewer system. That's right. <laughs> also, uh, if you're gonna go racing, remember to wear a harness. Can't wait for yes. the. Well, there's your problem. Collaborative lemon steam. <laughs> That's right. Bring a suitcase full of baked beans. <laughs> Next episode is the Tacoma and Aaron's Bridge quick. Disaster. Yeah. This, uh, well, I there's your call. problem. Any percent speed run. I was wow. about to say, yeah, we, we made it quick. This is because Riley um, forced his yeah, will on us. Yeah, he inculcated us. us See how you like it, Riley. Show, show See how energy. you like it. And so now we can only By do way, podcasts we- within an hour and a half. Yes. We were on the most recent bonus episode of Trash Future, so listen to that podcast. Yes. Let me get paid off of you listening twice. Yes. Yes. Become our pay pigs. That's right. Oh. Uh, we have a Patreon for this purpose, where there will be bonus episodes. Our next bonus episode is on Group B. Yep. Group B rallying. More of this, more, more motorsports. What motorsports? Motor yes. A lot of death. Lot, oh, Even so lot much death. death. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what mm-hmm. happens when we take a car that weighs as much as a bicycle <laughs> and we put a twin turbo V6 <laughs> in it? Let's find out. Yes. <laughs> That's not gone well. <laughs> er, quattro, er, quattro, er, quattro. <laughs> hey, but listen, if it hadn't uh, been I for have... the demise of Group B, you never would have gotten the anti-lag sound in Group A. So, you know. No. Yeah, just enjoy that. B- 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 that was dope. All right, uh, I I am working on shirts. I have taken it <laughs> over. I'm waiting on Union Pete to get back to me. All right. so. If you want a Pennsylvania yes. Secret Service card following our oh, yes. election victory, you can DM me. What you cannot DM me, or I guess you can, but I wish you wouldn't, is those Pennsylvania Secrets. Yes. Yes, they are. I need three things from you. The name you want on the card, the image you want on the card, and the address you want me to mail the card to. If you send me all three of those, I can get right on it and print it. And if you want to send me a few bucks for shipping, that would be much appreciated, but it is not mandatory. This has been an announcement about the Pennsylvania Secret Service cards. Go birds. Send more money. I'll send more stuff. That's right. Yes. I guess my commercial is Franklin 12. It's coming. No, really, it's coming. I, I, I actually have the damn thing open in fucking Adobe Premiere right What's now. What's this one going to be? I've gotten a bunch of stuff done. Oh, 12? Yeah. 
12 is about um 12 is about the various ways we have subjugated people in the west oh, i'm sure that will be oh, boy, the an enlightening and relaxing time oh yeah yeah it's full of exciting topics mm-hmm. like the walking treaty like cherokee removal like the haitian revolution yeah. And how we profited off that. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. That's self care. Huh? Well, well, there's mm-hmm. your problem. Uh, vive General Dessaline. Uh, vive General Louverteur. Yes. Is it Louverture? I think so. Because I was calling him Louverture the whole uh-huh. time. Amy Louverture. <laughs> Amy Love. Fuck, that's so cursed. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing a stapler at Napoleon. <laughs> what I'm here for. It turns out the short guy with the horse was bad. Oh yeah, real bad, um, folks. <laughs> yes, not very good. Um, other than that, I don't know. Subscribe to our Patreon. Of- yeah, subscribe to our Follow Patreon. Follow Liam on Twitter. Something about the yes, Discord. Yes. Oh, oh. Yeah, something about yeah, the Discord. Discord. Don't Which be you, assholes we in there. We haven't quite figured out if it's for patrons only or not, uh-huh. but that's where the link is. Uh-huh. But you could probably nice. just distribute the link, too. I, I wouldn't care. Yeah, I don't really care. Yeah, exactly. Um, just, just stop causing problems. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> please shut up about your fucking problems. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to deal with yeah, this. It's, it's well, there's it. your problem, not well, there's yeah, our problem. Not well, there's our problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yes, right? This, is, this should be a more grill-pilled sort of environment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I want you want to log on to this fucking Discord and then start talking about uh, uh, the, the specific. Bullshit. Yeah, the, uh, uh, we're gonna have like serious discourse about like uh, China or some crap. It's like no, we're we're supposed to hear. We're supposed to just be shooting a shit. Please just shit post trains. Yeah, I'm begging you. Do not have serious opinions on our Discord. Mm-hmm. To do him on Twitter take, like a man. Take him outside. That's what parking lots that's are right. for. <laughs> can we just have? Can we just quarantine off a channel called the parking lot and just let you have it out in there? Oh yeah, we have political fight club yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah, political fight club. We, we could just rename the parking yeah, do lot. It. Yeah, yeah. All right. To so meet me outside. <laughs> <laughs> No rules. <laughs> Ugh. If you don't want to be abused, just don't go in that channel. Exactly. <laughs> Someone will call you a mean name, and I will do yeah. nothing to stop them because you signed up for it. I hear Roz yeah, is in there swinging a chain around and hollering about Maoism. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes, I, I too have heard that. <laughs> All right. I think that's a podcast. Bye, everybody. Okay. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Au revoir. Au revoir. Das Vidania.